Welcome back. It is Sunday, May 14th in the MLB. Our five favorite picks are on the way. I'm Austin, joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a weird day. It was an 0-2 day. Our Nerfy was one of the only two runs scored all game. Those always hurt. And then Royals Brewers, my pick over nine and a half, did not hit. They ended up with seven runs. Plenty of opportunities, so just didn't get it done. Now, Logan talked about the Mets, minus one and a half. We'll touch on that in one second as... That was a weird game. It is now postponed. We'll talk about that in a second. But I do want to talk about first is that there is an offer on Betfred. I've talked about this before. Like Betfred's available in Maryland, Ohio, Arizona, and Iowa. And if you new users can sign up and get $111 in bonus bets when they just wager 50 bucks. So if you want to check it out, all the details down below in the description. Betfred, another one of our options. We have Bet365, DraftKings, a bunch of different other books on dimers. This is one of them if you want to check it out. Up again, available in Ohio, Maryland, Arizona, and Iowa. All the details are down below in the description for you guys to check out if you want to but logan it's going to be a good day today i'm feeling a good day we don't normally do five picks although one of them is kind of a carryover from yesterday but what you got for the people today yeah the, let's touch on the carryover right we we did take the mets on the run line minus one and a half in the first game we i just wanted to touch on this one because this it will be on today's card as far as our like record recap it's a continuation from yesterday the weather postponed this one till today so it's going to be kind of interesting to see. This has actually never happened to me where I started or I had a bet start in a game and then I had to finish it. So it's going to continue from yesterday. The bet isn't settled yet. I just did want to touch on that. But as far as today's picks that didn't carry over from yesterday, we're going to the Tigers game versus versus the Mariners in this one. I'm taking a Tigers plus one and a half on the run line. Minus 105 on points bets, currently your best value in this one. My philosophy on the weekends, especially on, on Sundays, is to pick the underdogs, right? I see value in a, in a Tigers team trying to avoid the sweep. Now, Joey Wentz is on the mound for the Tigers. Is he my favorite pitcher to back? No. 6.09 ERA, 1.35 whip. I actually think that ERA is due a little bit of regression, though. That whip isn't all that high for that high of an ERA. Wentz is, has been better in his last start, only allowing two earned runs to Cleveland. On the season two, I do like this matchup for Joey Wentz because Seattle is only hitting 205 versus left, left-handed pitchers. That's 28th in baseball. At the end of the day, it's like uh, Wentz should actually be able to go up and not hopefully get rocked. Seattle's 18th in runs, 28th in hits. I have no problem fading this Mariners offense because they're just, to me, up and down. There's no sort of consistency to the Mariners offense. They strung together two wins in this one. I could see an absolute dud coming on a Sunday when everyone's everyone and their mother has them on the money line and in their parlays, right? That would be very fitting to how baseball works. Now, who's starting for the Mariners today? It's Logan Gilbert, right? 3.79 ERA, 0.99 whip. Gilbert's ERA slightly increases to 4.15 ERA on the road in his four road starts. I like to use K props as breadcrumbs left behind uh, books to see how they think a pitch will perform that day. Gilbert's K prop only set to five and a half, right? Something he's hit in all seven starts this year. Of course, there is juice on the over. I'm just saying, I I, I I would be very, very surprised if he just comes out and deals like 8Ks in this one because the books don't normally give away free money like that. I've seen them do it before, but yeah, that would be kind of shocking, especially against the Detroit offense. That's 28th in batting average and 30th in OPS. I'm not going to come out and say they're a good offense, but the, you know, there's certainly concern about this Tigers offense after getting shut out yesterday. But after a shutout, how does a team respond, right? Expect them to come out aggressive. If they are drawing walks, getting base runners on Logan Gilbert, I expect them to steal and be aggressive in this one. Now, a late game, Seattle is first in bullpen ERA. I do lo- I love their bullpen a lot. Detroit is 21st in bullpen ERA. Don't love their bullpen a lot. But if that bullpen discrepancy scares you, just take Detroit in the first five plus a half because this is also one I did consider. But at the end of the day, I'm just going full game. Why? Because there's weird random stuff that always happens on Sundays in baseball. And if you told me the Mariners' bullpen collapsed despite them being first in bullpen ERA, I'd say, yeah, that's about on brand. So I'm going to go ahead and roll with the Tigers in my first pick in this one. But Austin, what do you got for us? Hey, I love I love the pick, but I'm going to go to an over, and it's a game that they're expecting a lot of runs because I'm going to be in the Phillies and Rockies game. And I'm taking the over, 10.5 runs, minus 118 on Fandom. Now, this isn't Coors Field. Very rarely will you see an over under in that 10 range unless you're in Coors. But through two games in this series so far, you've seen them combined for nine runs in the first game. Green, I think they were scoreless until the fifth inning, so they still managed nine runs. And then yesterday they got 11 runs. The Phillies put up a four spot in the first inning. Now, let's talk about the two pitchers that, that were or look at the you know runners in scoring positions stats so far the Phillies five for 13 in this series pretty solid Rockies three for 18 with runners in scoring position they've had 
All the runners on base, they just have not been able to get them around base. But I think some positive regression is coming their way. And yesterday, both teams needed a ton of work from their bullpen. You saw the Phillies need five innings pitch from the bullpen. And the Rockies, thanks, uh, sadly, Ryan Feltner left early because of a line drive. I think it hit him in the head. And they had to go seven and a third innings pitch from that bullpen. Now, if there's anything I know, both these bullpens are not very good. And coming off of games where they had to throw a lot of innings, could be maybe they try to leave their starting pitcher in a little bit too long, maybe an extra inning, and that could lead to, you know, a three, four, five run type inning, and that's big time for hitting an over at 10 and a half. Now, Aaron Nola going to get the bump for the Phillies today. I'm not going to come out here and say Nola's, you know, a bum. I mean, 4.44 ERA, 1.13 whip, but he does throw some pitches, some hard pitches, and he's had a lot of home run and six of eight starts so far this year, and he's really been struggling getting those whiffs. 20th percentile and whiff rate. 32nd percentile on K percentage, 12th percentile on fastball velocity. So he's not speeding it past the base, the batters. And I think they're going to be able to get to him. You saw the Rockies already bat against him almost a month ago on April 21st. This was in Philadelphia. He did throw seven innings pitched, only four hits, but three earned runs. All of those coming via a home run. And the Rockies, 109 total plate appearances versus Nola, 290 expected batting average. We know the Rockies, third best batting average at home, eighth highest OPS at home. I think they can get to Nola and whether they want to. And you look at Nola's hits allowed props in that six and a half, a number that he has not given up, you know, seven hits in a lot of games this year. They're clearly expecting some base runners here. Now, Kyle Freeland on the other side will start for Colorado. And he's been all right this year. I mean, the lefties coming off two solid starts, five innings pitch, zero earned runs versus Milwaukee, and seven innings pitch, two earned runs versus the Pirates. But I don't think Freeland is a 3.5 ERA guy like he is this year. I think some regression's coming his way, and he started against Philly on April 22nd. Went, you know, we allowed four earned runs, three of those via the home run, and six innings pitched. And Freeland allowed a home run in five of his last six. We know the ball carries out of Coors Field. And while the Phillies have struggled versus lefties this year, we know how good they were versus lefties last year. And their lineup really hasn't changed a whole lot. So I'd be surprised they're like 23rd in batting average versus lefties. I'd be very surprised at the end of the year if they are 23rd. They'll probably be much better than that. So look at Freeland, 4th percentile whiff rate, 18th percentile K percentage, 20th percentile chase rate. Not getting guys to chase and whiff on pitches. And it comes out if the Phillies can put the ball in play. And I think guys like Trey Turner, Alec Bohm, you know, uh, Bryce Harper, all these guys can do that. So I think there's going to be plenty of base opportunities here. The both bullpen are not great. Colorado, 11th highest bullpen ERA, which I'd argue probably needs some regression because that's less than four. And then Phillies, 7th highest bullpen ERA. So I think there's going to be a lot of run opportunities here. It's Coors Field. I want to root for an over. I think this is a good spot to take it after, you know, while only 11 runs yesterday, I think we could be potentially in like one of those 13, 14, 15 run type games. So I'm going to ride up the over in, in the Colorado. But Logan, you got another play for the people. What you got? Yeah, well, I'm going to a team total in this one. And like you, I'm, I'm going over. I'm taking the over on the Pirates team total, three and a half, minus 122 odds on FanDuel's current or your best value. Slight, slight little bit of juice to lay. But I think the Pittsburgh Pirates have a good chance to win this game. If you want to take them on the money line, go for it. You know, it's about split public percentage on that one. I also think this, this game itself has a great chance to go over the full game total. So just a couple other leans if you don't want to take a team total. But for what it's worth, it's a funny stat. Pittsburgh hasn't went over this line in 12 straight games. They've been absolutely reeling. If you've been backing the Pittsburgh Pirates or a fan of the Pittsburgh Pirates, I'm sorry. This is a regression we talked about that was coming for them. It's hitting them really hard. But I do like their matchup versus Kyle Gibson today. I think they're going to get back on track. Kyle Gibson pitched a near masterpiece the last time I picked him in the first five. Remember that that game against the Rays. He only allowed one dang home run in, in the first five. He was excellent. Now I have to fade him, unfortunately, right? Gibson, 4.4 ERA, 1.34 whip on the season. He's near – this is why I'm targeting this one, though. Gibson is near bottom in, in hard hit percentage at, at 41%. The Pirates are fifth best in hard hit percentage at 42%. I've watched Kyle Gibson a lot, right? He's one of those pitchers I I, I really do think uh, is exploitable, especially coming off you know a, a performance that I've I've seen him pitch well before. He was getting the ground, he was inducing the ground ball contact, the soft contact, and getting those outs that way. But you know what? He's certainly liable to regress back to what I know him to do and to give up those hard hit extra base hits. But when the Pirates are at their best. They're getting those hard hit extra base hits. And I, I see those opportunities today because they haven't been getting them a lot of the times. I mean, despite getting shut out, Pittsburgh's still 12th in batting average, 7th in OPS on the road. They're still a solid offense. And yesterday, they are only 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position yesterday in that shutout. I'll guarantee there will be more run, runners in scoring opportunity versus Gibson today because he might put on a few guys via walk. 
He might he might allow, like I said, the extra base hits, and it's up to the Pirates' bats to be able to convert those into runs on a team that's absolutely absolutely reeling. Can they get it done for us today? I, I think so today. It's just like how much, how bad can you be for how long? Eventually, the tides will turn, and I think they did turn versus Gibson today. But Austin, get those flags out. Oh yeah, baby! You know what time it is. Nerfy Nation, stand up! Our fifth and final play will be our no run first inning of the day. Uh, if we lose on another home run, I'm going to be very mad. But I think today we had a good one, and hopefully we can cash out for you all. That we're going to go to the Cubs in Twins game and take the no run first inning in this one. It's currently minus 120 on Caesars. We need six quick outs now on the bump. For the Twins today will be Louis Varland. He's going to get it going. And Varland, 1-2, and two, I know, on first inning. He's only made three starts. If you look at that record, 1-2, and two, not great. He has a, he allowed a home run in both the two starts that he gave up a year fee. We can't really predict home runs. One of them was in Yankee Stadium. I think Volpe and Judge had a home run in that one. And so I think the Cubs, you know, looking at them, 24th in first inning runs. They're slightly worse on the road as well. I think after a game where the Twins scored 11 runs, I think some regression's coming for their offense, but I think Barland can go out there and get us the first three outs against the Cubs, but who's going to have to go up against the Twins because we need him to lock in, Logan. Yeah, we need Marcus Stroman, right? Stroman, be at your best, 8-0 on Nerfies this year, so he's been an absolute you know wagon for the no-run first inning. Hopefully he can continue that again today. The Twins, 19th in first inning runs. They're also tied for 28th in first inning runs at home. I, I have no problem ever fading this Twins offense. I really hate them a lot. You know, just at the end of the day, Marcus Stroman, you absolutely have to do your job. The over-under set low, obviously, to seven and a half. You know, coming off of an a, a absolutely high-scoring game for that Twins offense yesterday, yeah, this is this is a good regression spot for Marcus Stroman to pitch well, and I, I think he'll be able to get us those last three outs that we need. Nerfy Nation, come on, let's fly the flies. After that brutal home run yesterday, one of only two runs scored in the whole damn game. Oh, my gosh, that makes me... Uh. Nothing worse than that, but either way, I think we got a good shot today. The Nerfies are going to get hot, so don't miss the hot streak when it comes. Hopefully it starts this week, starting up the new week with a winner. But those are our five favorite picks of the day. A reminder that Mets pick is the first game, just a rollover from yesterday. But let's have a great day, Logan. Let's bring out the brooms. A 5-0 day would be electric, and we'll see you guys back again on Monday morning. We'll see you guys then.